Hello, my name is Mario. Welcome to another Learning Go video. In today's episode, I'm going to be covering another concurrency pattern. This is specifically is the implementation of background jobs. So what is a background job? In the context of this video, because we are using concurrency and we're using the primitives in the language like go routines and channels, I'm focusing on things that happen in process in memory. So in this case, I when I say background job, I mean a processing charge of doing some something, some work behind the scenes. It's initialized by, an, by another process, another parent process. And in practice, what this means is uh, go routine launching and go routines. So let's look at the code so you can see what I mean by this. As usual, the link to the examples that I'm going to be showing you are in the description of this video. So feel free to clone the repo, check out the examples by yourself in, you know, when you have some free time. What I'm going to be covering first is this example where I'm discussing, well, implementing, implementing graceful shutdown as well as the implementation for background jobs. Like I said in the beginning, this is not background jobs in the concept that you have a distributed processing uh, queue, for example, or like RabbitMQ that is receiving events and then creating jobs or you're creating jobs based on those events or those messages that the, in this case, for example, RabbitMQ is receiving. If you want to do that, I have another video that again will be leaving the link in the description so you can check that out. This is again in memory using go routines, channels and the other primitives that exist in the language. So I have three, uh, two functions, well, uh, more than two functions. So I have listen for work, which is implementing the logic for creating the workers. I'm going to define in this case, uh, an, an arbitrary number would be five. And what is going to be doing this program is going to be listening for signals, OS signals, in this case, SIG term. So every time a SIG term is produced or received by this program, a, a new worker will be invoked and it will be processing and doing some work. In this case, what it's going to be doing is calling this function called do work. And what do work is doing is printing out a message, sleeping for three seconds, and then just printing out another message. The important thing about this is that the way it's implemented, uh, let me close this one. The way it's implemented is, like I said, there is a the, our channel that is receiving the messages, which in this case, I decided to use the uh, notify uh, function in the signal package to listen for signals, but you can assume this will be sort of like a, an HTTP endpoint, for example, whatever thing that you're using for receiving events from outside the world, from outside your binary. And then I define a buffer channel, which in this case is using an empty struct, but assume that this is the message that you're going to be receiving or the format of, or, or the type that you're going to receive. It could be a string, it could be a JSON, it could be a binary, it could be whatever you want to be, an array of bytes or whatever. Uh, and that will be used as the number to indicate how many workers are supposed to be executed. So every time I receive a message right here, let me move this down. Every time I receive a me message, uh, I'm going to be, again, launching the goroutine for doing the work. So really the logic of what is happening is, is thanks to this channel that I defined above. If you remember, I said I want to create a buffer channel and I'm going to be doing a full range to that buffer channel. So every time there is a new message, I'm going to be launching a go routine. So let's see how that works in practice. So I have, um, oops, I have this main, I already one important thing about this is that you need to compile these examples because we are using a signals. If you use go run, it is not going to work because you're, you will be sending the message to the go run command, not the actual binary that is running. So I have um, a process right there that is indicates the process ID. So it's printing out the process ID. I'm saying uh, send the term message, right? So it's saying it's starting. It's going to be sleeping for three seconds, and then it's going to be completed. If I decide to do this using a four, for example, uh, which I'm going to be printing, uh, doing something similar to simulate processes that are happening or events that we're going to be receiving or signals that are going to be triggered. The idea is, is going to be similar. So each one of the events are going to be added to the buffer channel. Then the range is going to be looping for those events or waiting for those messages and then launching the go routine. And if I do the same with, uh, let's say I do 15, you will notice that 
uh, it's going to be something similar, but you will you will see that it, at, at some point uh, it will stop and then continue because of the we reach the buffer channel, and you cannot do more because we the the, the capacity of that buffer channel is uh, already we we exceed or we reach the maximum capacity of that um, buffer channel. Now, this is one way to do it, and I want to describe this one in particular because most of the times, again, depending on your implementation, you can use a format like this one when you are receiving a messages through a buffer channel, and that buffer channel is the one being used for uh, triggering the goroutines. Let me show you another example, which is a, a little bit similar. It's using, again, some of the other concepts that I covered in previous episodes, so give me a few seconds. So this second example is um, doing, again, something similar, but the, the idea is a little bit different. Uh, for this one, what I decided to do is define a buffer as well as a, no, uh, as a number of channels, or rather a number of workers. And I decided to define a type just for the sake of defining a type to show you a different way to do this. And again, is having some sort of a graceful sh sh uh, graceful shutdown implementation, which again I cover in a different video. If you haven't seen that, the link in the description. The implementation for the graceful shutdown, which I didn't mention previously, is pretty straightforward. It's again listening for a signal. In this case, I'm only listening for interrupt, which is the con con control C uh, that you use locally for pausing or stopping your program but it could be like a sick term or, or a sick quit that are happening that are triggered by docker containers or, or not docker containers but rather the docker orchestrator that is running and stopping your containers in case if you happen to be using docker again don't worry about that the important bit about this is the actual implementation of the scheduler which in this case i have a new initializer right here which says new scheduler i define the number of workers the buffer and I create a new channel which is used for receiving events and at the same time I created a new signal which is going to be used when we decide to stop the process that is triggered or rather the, the jobs that are triggered by the scheduler and I will show you that in a moment so keep keep that in mind I'm going to scroll down a little bit and I will show you the implementation of listen for work and listen for work is a little bit similar to what we did before the biggest difference is that now instead of creating uh, go routines for each one of the messages received I'm creating those go routines in advance and I'm using another primitive in the language called select that again I previously covered in another video that I put okay, it is also part of this series now here is the cool thing about this because I'm creating the go routines in advance which would be in this example so for each one of the number of workers and I'm launching a goroutine and each goroutine is listening for a message that is coming from or in the message channel so every time a message is sent or received or rather is sent because we receive a signal is going to be processed by the other goroutine so in, in to say in a different way we're creating a buffer of how big is going to be the message queue so to speak is not a queue and the other one will be how can we uh, create the go routines that happen to be processing that data or those values and whatnot so with that being said what is going to happen in the end when the signal for closing is received i'm going to be closing the message channel therefore the open will be false and i will be indicating uh, calling done in the wait group. This is so all the go routines that were launched previously exit and we can exit cleanly after waiting in the exit method. Now let's run it and see how this thing works. Again, you need to build it uh, to make it uh, receive all the events. As usual, I, I'm saying I'm ready right there. I'm going to do a kill as term. I'm going to be sending oops not there and i'm going to be doing hey i'm processing an event is just processing not doing anything about it because if you remember uh the implementation that i have right here compared to the other one i'm not sleeping i'm just printing out processing so i know that the uh, coroutine received a message which is it's not printed out correctly so right there it's, it's better display because i made the mistake of uh 
pasting the ID. But what this means is that this zero is actually the worker. So depending on what worker is receiving it, you will see that it's being processed by different goroutines. So that's what I was trying to say. Now, if I do something similar to what I did with the four, and I say 15, I need to modify the process ID. I will change it to 36 to 50, which is the one that I have right here. But right before I do that, I want to remember that I define two arguments in my scheduler. The first one will be the number of workers, which in this case you will notice that it's from zero to four, so five workers, and the buffer, which indicates how big the buffer channel is. So what it means is that how many messages can I queue or accept while the workers are processing the ones that they already receive. So if I do 15 uh, and I run this again, let's run it, you will notice that it's processing and because right now I'm not time not timing out, right? Sleeping in there's no timer, you will notice that they immediately complete and and and, and, the, and that's kind of the, the demo I want to show you. The important bit about this example and in, in the other one example as well is that uh there is no way in Go to close or cancel a running go routine if you don't have a way to communicate with that specific go routine. So in a different way to rephrase this is that because this go routine is expecting a message through the message channel, I can stop this go routine because I can close the, the message channel and that way the go routine can exit. In the example that I had before, even if I exit, there is no way for me to communicate to those go routines that already started. So what is going to happen is that these go routines will not exit cleanly. So this is kind of an important differentiation when you are talking about distributed uh, background jobs and when we're trying to do something in memory in process using the primitives or of the language. With that being said, I'm not saying that this is useless. There are use cases for this one. For example, when we're trying to process something that it's okay if everything, if when everything fails or when something fails, everything could fail. The other one, let's say you're trying to process a file. Uh, maybe you are creating different computations fr from the input from a file or a multiple files. Those could be sent to uh, do this kind of uh, background job calculation. Send those to another, maybe another channel. Use the pipe, a pipeline pattern that I described before, uh, before, and then do something with the results. So keep that in mind. I'm not saying this is useful, useless, but there are a few use cases where you can implement and use background jobs using channels, the sync package and as well, obviously, Gortins. So let's jump into the conclusions. I will talk to you in a few seconds. So this is another example of using concurrency patterns, or rather using all the primitives in the language and implementing something that you can use for your programs, background jobs in this, pro in this example, background process, whatever you want to call this thing. And again, the use case is there. It depends on what you're trying to do. If you need cancellation, uh, you maybe need to think of a different way or a different thing, maybe a distributed queue, uh, or yeah, like Providem queue, for example, or, or something similar. Again, there are use cases. This may not apply, not apply for everything, but again, it may be useful for you. In the end, the important bit that I want to, again, emphasize is that using a buffer channel is basically the key what you need for implementing this kind of, this kind of programs and this kind of pattern. And again, well, thank you for watching, and I will talk to you next time. Any comments, any questions, let me know in the section below. See you.